Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with more Psalm 95 today. And I want to look at verses 6 and 7. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. There is one ver there's one part of the end of verse 7, it kind of and it leads into the remaining verses. And it's not part of the focus. I'm going to focus. I'm going to leave off that last part of the verse of verse seven. If you want to read all of Psalm 95 or the verses down below, please, please, please do. I always encourage the reading of the Bible. If I could, if, if I could put it this way, if I could bait you into reading the Word of God by just like leaving off the end of a verse, I would do that in every video, just to make you crack open the Word of God. I would gladly bait you into that because even if I bait you into reading the Word of God, you're not really going to lose, and I'm not really doing a bad thing by making you read the Word of God. Anyway, that was an aside. The focus is on worship, the fact that He's our God, where the people of His pasture, the sheep of His hand. And there's something about worshiping God that reminds us of that. There's something about worshiping God that puts Him, it, it puts Him like in front of us, it puts Him directly in our line of sight, it enables us to hear him a bit better. It enables us to perceive that he is there. It's kind of like God's not changing. He's the maker of everything, creator of everything, big, powerful. Everything is under control. Everything is in his hands. That doesn't change. But when we worship him and when we kneel before him, we focus on him. We look at him for who he is. And at those moments, we're reminded of how great and how powerful he is. That we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, that he is God, he is our maker, and that everything is all right. He is in control. Have you worshipped him today? Have you spent a little bit of time with him to acknowledge him for who he is? That's something I try to do every single day, and I would encourage you to do it not just once a day, but several times a day. It talks about in Ephesians how praise is to continually come from our mouths, because as we look at him, we realize how big he is, and how small this world and all of its problems are, and how small we are as well. And see, he again, he is big. He doesn't change. The question comes from our perspective. Are we living life from the perspective of God is big? He is, our, he is in control. He is our maker. We're the sheep of his pasture. He's got us. Are we living life from the perspective of, oh my gosh, all these things are going wrong. All these things are terrible. What am I going to do? Is God really there? And when you worship, our focus changes. Again, God never changes. Our focus and perspective change and we start seeing Him for who He is and how He's got us and the whole world in His hands. Just, just to be repetitive, once again, He is our God and our Maker. We are the sheep of his passion, and we are his people. I'm going to keep on saying those things because that's what worship does. It, put, it doesn't change him. It changes us. It puts the proper perspective. to it, it, I, That sounded like bad English. It gives us the proper perspective of God's relationship to us and the world and the relation of our problems to the God who is our maker and who is our shepherd and who is our pastor. He's got us. And worship is a reminder of that. Worship him a little bit today. Worship him a little bit right now. It will make the difference if you'll let it. So sometimes we can worship and it's just like another ho-hum Sunday morning, but when we worship God, we really take the time to look at, away from our problems and look at him. And we're not just going through the motions or going through the routine. We've just got some music on in the background. We really take the time to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And what that essentially means is worshiping Him with a repentant heart, making sure our, the sins that we know we've committed, we've asked Him to forgive us of. Um, we believe that He is real. He is there. He hears us. And we worship from that perspective. That's when that life change, that perspective change, comes into play. If you haven't given it a, given it a try, give it a try. I know when I learned about how praise and worship does change things, my life changed, and it changed for the better. That was one of those. Uh, that was one of those really good moments where, like, oh, this helps everything. It was one of those moments. Give it a try, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.